Hello everyone, in this video we're gonna talk about a principle known as the location principle. So, when do we use this? Well, when we are trying to find real zeros of polynomial functions. So what does the location principle say? It says this, if f is a polynomial function and a and b are two real numbers such that the f of a is less than zero and the f of b is greater than zero, then f has at least one real zero between a and b. So essentially what it's saying is we have a y value that's negative, we have a y value that's positive, and so a y value of zero must be between a negative and a positive, right? And that's when we find our real zeros of polynomial functions is when our equation or our function is set equal to y and we figure out what x is, okay? So to go on a little bit more about this principle, it says to use this principle to locate real zeros of a polynomial function, find a value a at which the polynomial function is negative and another value at b in which the function is positive. You can conclude that the function has at least one real zero between a and b. So a little bit of a diagram here to illustrate this principle. So let's say for example, we have this point here and we have this point here. So we're calling this point down here a comma f of a and this point would be b comma f of b. So obviously we can see that the b's, b's y value is positive and a's y value is negative, right? And so that leaves us with the truth that a y value of zero must lie between a negative and a positive, giving us the, um, the ability to say there is a, ze a real zero between those two numbers, okay? So we're gonna use a, an example here where we're gonna use our, our graphing calculator to graph this and we're gonna use the table feature on our calculator. Okay, so I'll, I'll show this on the screen as I do it. So we're gonna find all real zeros of f of x equals four x cubed plus 28 x squared plus 21 x minus 18. So I'm gonna go into y equals and I'm gonna graph this function. So four x cubed plus 28 x squared plus 21x minus 18, and I'm gonna hit graph, okay? So I've already got my window set to be able to see um, this function, uh, the, the, the minimum and the maximum, or at least of the middle portion of the function, right? And so I'm not necessarily worried about what the graph looks like right now because I'm going to the table of values. So on your calculator to get to that, we're gonna hit second graph to get to our table of values. And we're gonna think about our, what our location principle said. We are looking for where y values change sign, okay? or where a y value is zero. If we have that, that's even better. So if we look right now, we see that uh, we have a, a value, a coordinate at negative six comma zero. So we actually do have a zero of, a, of the function right now. So we have a zero at negative six, right? Or an x-intercept at negative six. And so if we keep looking here, we can see that some other places where our signs change. So for example, we see between negative two and negative one, right? Because at negative two, our y value is 20, and at negative one, our y value is 15. So we know there's a zero between there. And then also between zero and one, because at zero, our y value is negative 18, and at one, our y value is 35, right? So between negative 18 and 35, a y value of zero has to lie between there. So now let's think about how many zeros we should be looking for. Well, our highest degree is a three, so fundamental theorem of algebra says that we should have three zeros. So we've already found one because we had a coordinate where the y value is already zero, that was negative six, and now we know we have two more. So now what we can do to figure out what our other two are um, is we can use our synthetic division process with the zero that we already know is a zero of our function. So we can go ahead and put our negative six right here and we can build our synthetic division. So we got four, 28, 21, and negative 18. So we're gonna drop down our four. And it's gonna be a negative 24, four, negative 24, negative three, and 18, and we do get a remainder of zero, which is what we expected to happen because we know that that negative six is a zero of our function. So now we could write this, what is our remainder, right? So we have x minus six, Okay, and then we have, uh, actually this would be x plus six, All right? That's what gave us our, our, our negative six for our zero there. And then what is our remainder? Well, this is our remainder, this is our constant, our linear term, and our quadratic term. So we have four x squared plus four x minus three. All right, and so we're trying to find the zeros, so we're gonna set this equal to zero, right? So we already know that one of our zeros is negative six, and now we just need to factor this part, this trinomial that's on the inside. 
So what I like to do when I'm factoring when a is not one is I like to factor by grouping. Okay, so I'm gonna leave my x plus six out here to the side. I know I'm gonna come back to that. I know that's gonna give me an x, um, an x intercept or a zero of negative six, but I gotta write, I gotta factor this other trinomial. So I'm gonna come over here to the side and I always like to draw this x. This is how I teach it in algebra one. There are other ways to do this that might be more efficient or quicker, but I think this is a, a visual method that helps to see what our um, factors are. So I like to put a times c on the top, b on the bottom. So this would be negative 12 and this would be four. So now I'm trying to think, okay, what two numbers add to four and multiply to negative 12? So that's gonna give me a negative two and a six, right? So negative two times six is negative 12 and negative two plus six is four. So I'm gonna rewrite my trinomial here as four x squared minus two x plus six x minus three. Okay, and I'm gonna factor this by grouping now. So I'm gonna group these two and these two. I'm gonna factor out. So let's factor out a two x from my first term. So that's gonna give me two x minus one. And when we're factoring like this, essentially we're trying to find a common binomial. So we would like for this to be two x minus one as well, so that now we can factor out that common binomial. So what do we need to factor out to get two x minus one? Well, that would be a three. And so now we can write our three factors, x plus six, two x plus three, right? Two x plus three, and two x minus one. And we're gonna set those equal to zero to find our three real zeros. So we already know that x plus six is equal to zero, and that gave us x is equal to negative six. That was the first real zero that we had found, and we found that from our calculator using our table feature. So now we're gonna set two x plus three equal to zero. So we get two x equals negative three, and we get x is equal to negative three over two. Okay, so that's our second zero. And then the last one, two x minus one is equal to zero. So two x is equal to one, and we get x is equal to one half. Okay, so we have located our three real zeros um, using our location principle, using our graphing calculator, using synthetic division. And so our three real zeros would be negative six, negative three over two, and one half. And that is how you can use the location principle to locate some zeros of your function. <laughs>